Welcome to our series, Seeking the New Poetry. Today, poems of K.D. Setna, Amal Kiran, part 13, with comments from Sri Aurobindo on the plains from which the poetry descended. Skyrims. As each gigantic vision of Skyrim preludes yet stranger spaces of the sea, for those who dare the rapturous wave whim of soul's uncharted trance profundity, there is no end to God horizonry. A wideness ever new awaits behind each ample sweep of plumless harmony, circling with vistaed gloriole the mind. For the divine is no fixed paradise, but truth beyond great truth, a spirit heave from unimaginable sun surprise of beauty to immense love lunar eve, dreaming through lone sidereal silence on to yet another alchemy of dawn. The first version had for its last line, to yet another revelatory dawn. Sri Aurobindo was asked about that. Will you tell me the worth of these 14 verses, both as poetry and as sonnet? I want perfection. So be unrelentingly critical if there is any drop. Sri Aurobindo writes, it is very good poetry and a very good sonnet, except for the last line where the vice is the word revelatory, which is flat and prosaic. At any rate here, I would use revealing, backed by another, and if possible, revealing adjective. Through Vesper's veil, a rose of fire like a secret smile, one from the heart of lost eternity, broke suddenly through Vesper's virgin veil, a smolder of strange joy, then Time grew dark, and all my vigil's burning cry a swoon, as if the soul were drawn into its God, across that dream curve dimming out of space. Then from the inmost deep, a white trance eye kindled a throbbing core of the unknown, some mute mysterious memory lit beyond the wideness with one star that is the dusk. Sri Aurobindo's comment and very fine poetry, quite original. Its originality consists, as in other poems of yours, of the same kind in the expression of a truth or plane of vision and experience not yet expressed, and secondly, in the power of expression, which gives it an exact body, a revelatory, not an intellectual exactitude. Lines 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 11 are overhead lines, illumined mind. The next one is Pool of Loneliness. I have become a secret pool of loneliness's mountain cool, a dream poise of unuttered song lifted above the restless throng of human moods, dark pictures wrought of fragile and of flawful thought. Now, nevermore, my tunes shall flow 
in molds of common joy and woe. But seraph hands reveal wide jars cut from the solitudes of stars and stoop across the sky to fill the perfect shapes of their calm will with musical obedience from my pellucid time suspense and in their crystalline control of heaven-mooded ecstasy carry the waters of my soul unto God's sacred thirst for me. Sri Aurobindo's comment, it is a very fine poem. It comes from the intuitive plane, belonging to the intuition proper, which brings with it a sort of subdued inspiration. I mean inspiration of the more quiet, not the more vital kind, and a great felicity of language. The meaning is not obscure, but deep enough to make one reflect before getting the whole of it. And the last poem, Agni. Not from the day, but from the night he's born. Night with her pang of dream, star on pale star, winging strange rumor through a secret dawn. For all the black uncanopied spaces mirror the brooding distance of our plumless mind. O depth of gloom, reveal your unknown light. Awake our body to the alchemic touch of the great God who comes with minstrel hands. Lo, now my heart has grown his glimmering east. Blown by his breath, a cloud of color runs. The yearning curves of life are lit to a smile. O mystic sun, arise upon our thought, and with your gold omnipotence make each face the center of some blue infinitude. Sri Aurobindo's comment, and a long comment. The modifications now made are quite satisfactory and render the poem perfect. The last six lines still remain the finest part of the poem. They have a breath of revelation in them, especially the image, my heart has grown his glimmering east, and the extreme felicity of the yearning curves of life are lit to a smile have a very intense force of revealing intuitivity. And on a less minute, larger scale, there is an equal revealing power and felicity in the boldness and strength of the image in the last three lines. These six lines may be classed as inevitable, not only separately, but as a whole. The earlier part of the poem is also fine, though not in the same superlative degree. The last two lines have something of the same intuitive felicity, though with slighter, less intense touches as the first two of the rhymeless sestet, especially in the alchemic touch of the minstrel.